this here is a Canon XA20 camcorder that came in for repair recently. Now these were released, if I'm correct, about 15 years ago and at the time they were the bee's knees. So it's a, a really good uh, camera and it also has XLR inputs at the top. So this could be used for semi-professional use. Anyway, the reason why I'm making this video is because um, there are a couple of issues with this repair that I want to make you aware of. If you're doing this for the first time and you're not aware of those issues, you could easily damage the camera. So this one came in because it had a no power issue. So when they would plug in the power adapter, the camera would not power on. So the first thing we did, or the first thing I did, was uh, check that um, we have power at the power adapter. So I'm just going to show you that now. Right, as you can see, we've got the power adapter in front of us. And uh, here is the head or the jack of the power adapter. And if you have a look up here, you've got a digital multimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly check that and make sure that we've got an output on the uh, the on the adapter so we'll do that now and as you can see on the digital multimeter that the ad power adapter is outputting 8.4 volts which is fine and which is what it's supposed to be outputting okay so what I did was the first thing that I did was I checked the power port where the power plugs in and that is located here on the back side. Just move that out of the way. Right. So if you have a look here underneath this port here, let's lift that up. And you can clearly see there is a jack, a power jack here, right? This is the yellow one is for audio and video. This is the one that we're interested in, this one here. So what I did was the first thing that I did was I mean I had my suspicions that it may be this uh, jack here that's the fault. And I just took a sharp tool and I tried to uh, move this move this around, okay. And what I found was that the jack was loose, so it had obviously come loose from where wherever it's fixed to. And um, I thought it's time to investigate a bit further. Now, the first issue that I'm going to make you aware of: there's a certain way that you have to dismantle this camera, and if you don't do it in that in in that order. Uh, you could easily cause damage to it and and I think that's what happened on, on a prior repair attempt so I'm going to show you that now, I'm going to make you aware of those issues so to dismantle this camera or to take it apart, to take the cover off to check it all out, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove this top cover this top piece here and it looks quite straightforward, but you could easily damage it if you don't do it the right way. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to unscrew this piece here, okay, from the hot shoe. So you can unscrew this, you can screw this down or up. So you unscrew it. And then what you're going to do is at the back here, you've got, I don't know if you can see that, you can see that here. We've got two screws here, one on this side and one on this side. What you have to do is you have to unscrew these completely, right? You have to unscrew them. like so but here's the thing when you unscrew them the way that it the way that it presents itself you would think that that's it you, you've unscrewed it now and it's fine okay and if you put pressure now if you now put pressure because you have to push this this way right you have to push this this way to take it off but if you put pressure now what hap what will happen is it will crack it will crack from here at this point here if you can see here right and it will split from here and why is that happening it's quite simple these screws they're a bit deceptive not only do you have to unscrew them after you've unscrewed them you have to actually pull them out all the way if you don't do that and you try to force this off you're gonna crack this piece here so make sure when you're taking this off that not only have you unscrewed them but you've also pulled them out and they stay in place and if you do that, right, and you then push this back gently, it will just come off. Okay, so that's the first thing that I wanted to make you aware of. Because this one had a crack in it here. So 
I figured out that you know what whoever tried to repair it before they must have broken it and the other thing is that what you got to remember is these cameras now they're 15 years old and these are if these are kept in a in a in a cold place in a basement or in a car or van um then over 15 years the properties of the plastic changes and it becomes more brittle so it's easy you know what i mean if you're not handling it properly you could easily damage the plastic on it okay so that's the first thing that i wanted to make you aware of how to take this off properly it's just a small thing but if you don't do it you will crack this piece here so just bear that in mind so what i've done with this one was i actually um there's four screws here if you take them off you can lift this slightly this piece here there's a there's like a groove here and it lifts up so if you lift that up then you what we did we, we applied some glue and on the where the crack is as well we reinforced it and just strengthened it a bit for the customer i mean that's the best that we could do with that i did uh, also mention them when they get them when it when they get it back what they could also do is put a, a rubber wrap from here to here to give it some more strength as well but it's quite fine i've tested it and it seems quite strong it should be strong enough to carry around for now so that's that bit there i wanted to make you aware of that and the second issue that i want to make you aware of is how to dismantle the camera the camera has to be dismantled in a certain way and i'm going to show you that now okay so the first thing that you're going to do when you attempt to dismantle this camera is you're going to remove this bottom piece here first okay so that's all of these screws here right and all of the screws here at the bottom and then you've got you've got one you've got two and you've got uh, three right so you remove once you remove them this bottom piece here will just come off it'll just come off like that right so that'll come off you put that to the side the second piece once you so once you've taken that bottom piece off the second piece that you have to take off is this top piece here this top piece here there's a hot shoe here with four screws black a black hot screw so i'm going to show you that i'll just show you that here's what it looks like right so you will take that off from here okay and then there's one screw here at the back inside here you're going to take that off once you've done that this front piece will just come come off like so right you've got that piece off now okay put that to a side the last piece that you're going to have to take off to get to that power adapter is this piece here but before you do that okay you're going to have to disconnect two cables this cable here okay and this cable here right I'll give you a close up of that so you need to remove this one here and this one here okay once you've done that what you will then do is you will open this bit here and there's a couple of screws inside there that you'll find take them all apart right and the second set of screws that you have to take off it goes from here if you can see here let's get that here from here right and then it follows down there's a few screws all the way which follow all the way along the bottom here right once you've taken those screws off this piece will just will just come off can you see it just comes off right and that's what you got to do so if you if you try to take if you didn't know that and you just tried to remove this side piece you'd end up breaking it which i think what happened before whoever tr whoever, whoever tried to repair it before as you can see here what they did was they tried to take it off and uh, they must have not taken off the top piece and they broke the plastic pieces um, from here and here and also there's probably one here as well but that's not an issue the camera still works fine for now but I'm just saying if you want to save yourself from that headache make sure you follow that um, dismantling procedure okay so that was that right the next issue that I had with this was when I took it off this here if you have a look here right let's have a look this here is the power socket that we're interested in that black one there 
okay. Now, when I had taken that side cover off, that piece fell off into the back of the case. It had dislodged itself from where it was anchored at these, uh, if I can get a close up of that, at these three points here. Can you see those three? One, two, three. These three points are where that socket is soldered on, okay? And uh, as you can imagine, they're 15 years old and you've got power passing through here. So over time, what happens is the solder joints, they dry up and they crack. And obviously with movement, plugging in and plugging out, plugging in, plugging out, that then breaks off there. And it's not really, it's not a very strong connection there as well. And that's basically what it was. But that's not all that it was. There was some other issues that I had when I was trying to solder that piece back on. But for that, I'm going to go under the microscope to explain that to you. Right, so the easy way to repair this would be just to get hold of that whole PCB with the um, the jack already attached to it. But unless you're an authorised service centre for Canon, good luck getting hold of that part because I was not able to get hold of it. So there was no other option for me but to repair what I already had. So these are the three solder points for the jack. One, two and three. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the jack had fallen out, so all we had here were three holes. There was one hole here, one hole here, and one hole here. Okay, and there was a bit of solder ar uh, uh, around the edges as well. So what I did was, I put some uh, flux on there, and I attempted to clean up the old solder, so I could apply some fresh solder. And as I was doing that, uh, the problem that I had was, underneath each of these solder balls is a little flat copper square okay it's it's not it's not like a, a complete square it's just like a okay so the best way that I can describe it to you it's like a, a little copper square flat copper square right so goes like that goes like that and it goes like that and then the inside is hollow okay so if you imagine right a piece like this made out of copper right and uh, there's nothing in the middle it's hollow and it's flat okay that sits on top of the PCB where these uh, the, the the solder points are and it's glued onto the board and there's three of them one two three under those three points on the microscope which I'm going to show you now so you can see the outline of the first square here and there was another one here and there was another one here right so as I was cleaning it up, those squares, uh, those copper squares are glued to the board. And as we were cleaning it up, they started to come off. Okay. And if you try to solder onto the board without them, they act as an anchor point to hold the jack in place and give it a bit more strength. So you must put them back in place before you solder this back on. Otherwise, it's going to break very easily. Right. So what you do is get a bit of glue, or you can use solder mask if you want, and just um, glue it into place, okay? Each of those squares, glue those squares into place, and then put your jack through and start soldering on top. And it will make the whole thing a lot more stronger, and, and that's basically all there is to it. Now, what you might also want to do, okay, if you want to give it a bit more strength, right this is optional you don't have to do this if you have a look here on the bottom side what you can do is you could put some solder mask or some glue along the bottom edge from here to here and also along the back edge from here to here right just to give it a little bit more support if you want right you can't go all the way to the top just to about here because there's a piece that comes in from the cover up to about here so just remember that as well. If you want it to boost it up and make it super strong, you could also add, add some glue around here as well. And uh, that's all there is to it. So hopefully, if you follow that procedure that I showed you today, you should be able to repair this camera and get it running again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all back together, put all the screws in, and uh, we'll switch it on, and we'll see if everything worked as it should. Right, so I've put it all back together, all the pieces, side piece, top piece, there you go, bottom piece, okay. I fitted the top, the XLR handle back together. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the power adapter and we're going to see if uh, if it powers up. So let's do that now. So the the power socket is behind here. Right. Let's bring power in here and let's see what it's saying. So I've got the power adapter and I'm just going to plug it in here. As you can see. Right. And you can see here the light has come on and there's no battery attached okay so I think that's done let's put the uh, the camera on and let's see what it's showing there you go and as you can see well oh, can I get it on there for you that's the best I can I think I can show it right so another job well done well i hope you found this video helpful and uh, i hope it will help you avoid those issues that i mentioned until the next one bye for now and have a nice day